Hey guys, welcome to Layer Lab. This video is going to be some tips and tricks on how to use Creality 5.0. Now the software is still a bit glitchy, so I'll go over some of the issues that I'm facing and a few ways to hopefully try and fix them. Now I will be putting chapters in the video, so if you're having a specific issue, then just have a skim through there and maybe I'll be covering it. Now let's start off with some of the glitches that we have. So the first one actually has to do with the printer G code. So if you want to go and find your printer G-code, just go to Tool, Manage Printer, and then go to G-code. For some reason, it doesn't show you until you click in the box. <laughs> I don't know why. So the issue that I'm having is when it gets to M190S and M109S, the printer is supposed to wait for the heat bed and the nozzle to reach temperature and then wait for it to stabilize. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that. It waits until the temperatures are kind of close and then it just starts printing, which is really not good because with the clipper firmware that I have on my Ender 3 V3KE, it overshoots by about two degrees and takes a couple minutes to stabilize. And by that time, I'm already into possibly the second layer and the temperatures are fluctuating everywhere. So uh, an easy way to get around that is just to put G4 and then P and then the amount of time that you want it to wait. So this is in milliseconds, so 200,000 is about 200 seconds. So if you want that shorter or longer, you just change this number here. And this means that when your printer has reached the temperature for the bed and the nozzle, it's gonna wait a further two minutes for everything to stabilize. Hopefully they'll fix this issue soon, but for the meantime, this is a way around it. Now, another issue that I'm having is when I want to save my presets for my materials, they don't save. I have to re-add them pretty much every time I open and close the app. So a current way to get around your filament presets disappearing on you is just to make a hard copy of your settings in a Word document, keep them there, and um, if you do lose them, then you can just refer back to that and re-update them. Also, when you add in your custom filament settings, for some reason, um, it all doesn't group up in one area. It kind of groups up at the top and then also groups up in the bottom and it's just all over the place. So hopefully this will also be something that they'll be fixing. Now, sometimes if you make a change, this slice plate button will be grayed out. Even if you change some of the settings over here, it's gonna be grayed out. The only way it will turn green again and allow you to reslice is if you move the object, which sometimes can be frustrating because you've got it in the perfect place, or you can just press preview and it will automatically reslice it for you. So when it comes to slicing, I always like to use the print with calibration tick box to make sure that the print is gonna come out perfect. With the new 5.0 firmware, when you click slice plate and open up land printing, you can select your printer, but you'll see that there's no tick box. It's still there, you just need to find it. So what you have to do is click multi-machine, disable printer matching, select the printer that you want, and then you'll find this print calibration tick box is there. Now it won't show up if you are currently printing something. So just keep that in mind, it has to be idle, and then you'll find the calibration box appear. Now if you're wanting to change filament mid print, then all you have to do is use this plus button, move to the layer that you want to change the filament, right click and then add pause. Now this isn't just going to pause the machine and uh, keep the nozzle exactly where it is. It will lift the nozzle up and move it to the bottom left hand corner of the printer, allowing you a bit of space to retract the old filament, put the new filament in, purge what is currently in there, and then you can resume the print from the screen on your printer. It will then move back to its original position and then continue printing. Now if you're wanting to duplicate objects on your build plate, Sometimes it can be a bit annoying because when you do so, it's going to place the object very, very close to the other one. If you have a skirt, sometimes they can get in the way. I just get a bit cautious having them so close because I just don't want them to bump into each other. So a way to fix this is to go to the layout settings and then you can choose how far away from each other they're going to be copy pasted. So instead of being one millimeter, let's put five. And then you'll see that they're a little bit further away. So if we want to copy paste these, they're going to have a nice amount of distance between each model. So you're not going to run into any issues. Now this software does support seam and support painting, which is kind of cool. So if you want to paint on some seams, you can just enter seam painting mode, select the pen size, and then you can literally paint them on. Slice plate, and then you'll see that's exactly where the seam has gone. Now I haven't actually figured out how to paint in a completely straight line. There is the ability to create a section on the model and then paint along that section and then it will follow. But I don't really know why it is sectioning it on an angle instead of just left to right. So you can choose the seam 
um, on a vertical axis. It cuts it on a weird angle. Even if you press reset direction, um, it doesn't really do anything. So I think this is something that I need to work on, but um, at least if you're in a pickle, you can paint on those seams. Now it does also have support painting, which is nice. In Cura, before you just have to put in these support blockers, like these um, squares that you could change to where you wanted or didn't want supports. But this actually lets you paint them on specifically. So if we want to put supports on, you can again choose your pen size. If you left click, you're going to get this green line, which means that they will place supports right here. If you shift left click, that will erase the green line. And if you use the right mouse button, you're going to get this red line, which means it will block supports on that certain area. If you ever forget what these shortcuts are, they have a little keyboard here, which shows you exactly what button to press. Now this also does have a fill feature where you can just literally press one whole area of the model, turn green or right click it and it'll turn red. Now this tool also allows you to choose what type of supports you want to use. So uh, that's a nice little feature to have. Now if you're wanting to use text on your object, it does have a text tool. So you just go to your desired orientation, move the text to where you want it to go and um, you can choose the font. Let's make it this font, looks nice. And then you can choose inside or outside. So if we choose inside, generate word, it's going to cut that text directly into the model. You can also choose how deep it is with the thickness. Um, and I think that's kind of cool because it saves you from having to do it in a 3D modeling program. So if we put outside, generate word, this is going to stick the text out of the model. Now this software does come with some calibration shapes. They're not as in-depth as the ones you find in Cura, but they do exist for the basics. So you got your temperature tower. You can just select your filament, choose the starting temperature and your end temperature, press OK. And this is going to completely automate the entire process. You don't need to modify any G code or put in any scripts. It will do this all for you, which is really, really cool. So I still haven't put my finger on how this retraction test works. You have a start retraction length of zero millimeters and an end of two millimeters. And each retraction step is 0.1 millimeters. So you'd think that because it's two, it's gonna go up two centimeters. It's gonna try 0.1 20 times. But when you create it, the overall length is three centimeters instead of two, uh, which is very strange. It doesn't have these numbers that show you what length they're going to. It just has this rod. And the model is extremely tiny and difficult to get off the build plate without breaking it. So uh, unfortunately you can't modify these calibration shapes. Once they're in, they're in, and as soon as you go to prepare, it disappears. So I have asked Creality on their Reddit page and on the website to try and give me um, some information on how this works. I've also looked through the manual and there is nothing on the retraction test. So at the moment, you're just gonna have to eyeball it. If you get lots of stringing down the bottom, then that means a lower retraction is not good for you. If you get lots of stringing at the top, then it means you need to use a lower retraction. So this will probably be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 6, 0 0.7, and it'll, it'll go up to 0.2. But the model is three centimeters, so I don't get it. It should be two centimeters, but alas. So they do have a number of different test models that you can print, including the Benchy, which is nice. It's built straight into the software. You can just click that, it'll open it up, and you'll be good to go. So by default, you probably won't have the material weight or the cost. These will be reading zero and zero. A way to fix this is to go into your filament, enable the advanced option, and then you'll be given uh, the price and density. You need to fill out both of these figures, otherwise you're not gonna get anything showing up for how much it costs and how much filament it's gonna be using. So simply add in the cost of your filament spool and then add in the density. Now the density can be found on Google. You just search in your filament type, so PLA, PETG, ABS, and that'll give you a idea on what number to put in here. Once you have these two numbers entered, then you'll start getting the material weight and the material cost showing up when you slice. Okay, so now it's coming to monitoring your webcam. Now at the moment, the only webcams that will work within this software are uh, Creality made webcams, such as the Nebula camera. I have a Logitech webcam hooked up to this machine, but as you can see, it doesn't show up. Now a way around this is to uh, root the machine and then open it up through an interface like Mainsail. I do have a tutorial on how to do this and how to enable third party cameras. So I will be putting that right here if you need help on how to do that. But as you can see with Mainsail, I have both webcams on and I can see both of them. 
perfectly. Now that said, not only will a third party camera not work in Creality Print, but it also won't work on Creality Cloud. So you just need to keep that in mind if you're wanting to monitor your cameras remotely. If you do have third party cameras and you want to monitor them remotely, then just use the video that I mentioned earlier. And that's going to run you through the processes on how to root the machine, install the software and enable your main sale interface along with Octo Everywhere, which will give you the ability to monitor your prints remotely outside your own Wi-Fi network. So hopefully this video has helped. When I find out some other tips and tricks, I'll let you know. But other than that, have a great day. See you in the next video.